Hello and welcome to the in-depth series of Drishti IS. There is a good news from the perspective of climate change. Ozone hole that was depleting is now seemingly to be recovering. Now, the thing here is that Montreal Protocol, which was finalized in 1987, seems to be a success. Can we replicate the success of Montreal Protocol when it comes to climate change? We will discuss that. From the perspective of examination, it is important to understand all about it, specifically GS Main's paper 3. And these are the many topics that we are going to cover over here. What is ozone basically? Ozone is a molecule. It contains oxygen. It contains three atoms of oxygen instead of two, like oxygen has two uh, atoms, so it's O2, but ozone has three atoms of oxygen, making it O3. It makes up less than 0.001% of the atmosphere. Oxygen makes 21%, but still, ozone is a very important element in our atmosphere. It protects us from uh, harmful and ultraviolet rays of the sun. UV radiation is more intense in higher altitudes and the stratosphere is where we have our ozone layer, okay? And ozone layer is made up during a process. We will discuss that process as well. So remember, the layers of the atmosphere has troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere and thermosphere and we have to understand in the region or, or in the layer of the stratosphere, we have our ozone layer moving ahead. Now, the ozone layer, it extends between 10 to 40 kilometer altitude, peaking at about 25 kilometers. This ozone layer has the property of absorbing the most damaging UV radiation and UVB radiation, making the inhabitants of the earth safe. C. Ozone is produced majorly in the tropical latitudes. And high altitude winds, they spread this ozone all over the planet. So remember this fact very well. They continually form and break down. So it's a continuous process because of the interacting of the ozone atoms or the, o, or the atom O. Okay, oxygen atom, not the ozone atoms. The distribution of the, the planet is not uniform or constant. This is also a preliminary fact. It might occur in uh, uh, concentration in certain regions as compared to others and seasonal and longer term variation in the quantity of the stratospheric ozone is different in different parts of the world. However, we are seeing that over the long run the natural process of formation is less as we compare it to the breakdown. So when this difference is there, we can say that ozone layer is depleting. Moving ahead, it is also formed at the ground level but it is toxic in nature. It generally happens in summer times when due to traffic because of the occurrence of nitrogen oxide in the traffic, the sunlight interacts with nitrogen oxide to form ozone and ozone level, uh, ozone um, gas is a toxic gas when it comes to the ground level. Remember that. Moving ahead, if we talk about measuring stratospheric unit of ozone, we have to discuss the Dobson unit. The total amount that is present in a column of overlying atmosphere is measured in Dobson units. Now, one Dobson unit, it can be thought of as an amount of ozone that would be present if it formed a layer of 0.1 mm thick at average sea level pressure and temperature. Okay, That means ozone layer would only be about 3 mm thick if it is brought down to the sea level. Remember this. The name Dobson unit comes from Dobson spectrophotometer. This is the me this is the measuring uh, apparatus that we use to measure the ozone layer. And this basically, this spectrotropometer, how does it measure it? By comparing the ratio of two different wavelengths of UV radiation. What is the difference between them? One being more strongly absorbed by ozone than the other. So there, if there are two radiations, Dobson spectrophotometer measures what is the difference between the radiation that is being absorbed more and the radiation which is being absorbed less. Okay. Moving ahead, it also uses the observed ratio to calculate the amount of ozone overhead. Overhead. Moving ahead. Now, since we have talked about ozone layer, the discovery of ozone hole is also there. Now, we see that Halley Research Station is overlooking the ozone layer since 1956 
and in 1985 the british antarctic survey scientists saw that there is a steep decline in the levels of ozone over the halley since 1970s and here the discovery of ozone hole occurred so it was acknowledged so from 1980s onward in the early 1980s they the scientists found a decline in the ozone concentration specifically in antarctic that is the south pole of course so in 1979 then 1986 1991 1996 you can see that antarctic region has a lot of decline now this developed because people have polluted the atmosphere due to the usage of chemicals which consisted of chlorine and bromine and this is because of the usage of chlorofluorocarbons or cfc halons and carbon tetrachloride refrigeration air conditioning foam packaging and making aerosol spray cans all these activities included the usage of cfc and they are so inert that they are carried very high into the stratosphere and these cfcs can stay there for a longer period of time making them to react with the other important atoms see once the cfcs reach the stratosphere this is generally the cfcs are unreactive in nature but once they reach the stratosphere they can be broken down by harmful uv rays when that happens chlorine is released now one thing that we have to know over here in order for this process to occur clouds have to be present in the stratosphere so that these clouds can provide ice crystals on which the chemical reaction is taking place now once released from cfc the chlorine can react with ozone to split them into o2 and chlorine oxide and these free chlorine atoms what do they do they gobble up the ozone and it quickly breaks down and releases the chlorine atom now in this way one chlorine can gobble its way through around 10000 molecules of ozone before it leaves the stratosphere and hence the removing of the layer now why we are seeing that it is so strong the decline is so strong in antarctic in antarctic which is which is uh, you know the place where the largest decline is recorded here the conditions are very favorable it is in the south polar stratosphere first of all here the conditions are favorable for ozone destruction because there is a lot of clouds stratospheric clouds providing proper you can say ground for such chemical reactions to take place and also there is a lack of atmospheric mixing between the south polar latitudes and air from elsewhere during austral winds and early spring now similarly we can see that it happens in the arctic as well but not up to this level see during south polar wind air in the stratosphere above antarctica drops to temperature below minus degree celsius this time is okay not a lot of intermingling of uv happens with the you know cfcs in the antarctic region but what happens that when spring arrives uv radiation from the sun they reaches the antarctic circle and starts reacting with them and hence the ozone destruction starts to take place it continues until the stratospheric clouds completely disappear due to warming of the south polar atmosphere when the summer approaches and by summer time stratospheric air from the lower latitudes is able to penetrate the polar latitudes now we can say why doesn't it happen in the arctic see the stratosphere over the arctic tends to not get as cold as over the antarctic that means stratospheric clouds are not there due to differences in the distribution of the land and sea between the two polar regions we can see that happening all right now if we talk about the recovery the new report says that earlier when ozone layers were depleted it is now expected to be completely repaired by 2066 this is what we are talking for the antarctic region about the rest of the planet where decline is happening the ozone layer is expected to be back to where it was in 1980 by the year 2040 and it is a success of the 1989 montreal protocol in here nearly 99% of the substances which caused such depletion were banned okay and because of the elimination we are seeing that ozone is replenishing itself now since 2000 the replenishment or the recovery is happening if current policies continue to be implemented then the ozone layer was expected to recover to 1980 values by 2066 over antarctica but of course we are seeing 
that HFCs are becoming another problem. By 2045 over the Arctic and by 2040 for the rest of the world, this is according to the report. Now, the global compliance to the Montreal Protocol would ensure the avoidance of 0 0.5 to 1 degree Celsius of warming by 2040. So, if we are complying with the Montreal Protocol, we are also keeping a tab on climate change. Now, Montreal Protocol was amended in 2016 because the replacement of chlorofluorocarbons were hydrofluorocarbons. Now, HFCs are not ozone depleting, but they are a very powerful greenhouse gas which increases the risk of climate change. So, that is another problem. The Kigali amendment which was done in 2016, it seeks to eliminate 80 to 90 percent of the HFCs which are currently in use by the year 2050 to prevent another 0.3 to 0.5 degree Celsius of global warming by the end of the century. So, let us see what happens with that. Now, if we have to talk about climate change, similarly can be done for Paris Agreement or not? See. Emissions of greenhouse gases can be similarly curtailed, but there are challenges because the use of ozone depleted substances was earlier restricted to certain industries, uh, aerosol spraying cans, air conditioning, refrigeration, but fossil fuels are used all over the sector. So it will paralyze the economy if we are going to eliminate it. Also for ozone depleting substances for CFCs, we had hydrofluorocarbons, but what happens? because of the uh, you know because there was a substitute so it became easy for cfcs to be moving away the impact of banning of the ozone depleting substances were not very you know extensive in the industry because they had substitutes and they recovered quickly from the ban which cannot be done for um, the carbon uh, gases uh, the greenhouse gases basically so emission of carbon dioxide is inextricably linked to harnessing of energy Another uh, problem is that renewable energy, solar, wind, hydro, hydro uh, power energy, these also have carbon footprints. So, we cannot completely eliminate it. And this, these fossil fuels are used in manufacturing, transport and other sectors. We do not want that the entire economy will be paralyzed, to be paralyzed. Also, there is a powerful methane gas which is, the, which is getting emitted from agriculture and livestock sector. How can we em eliminate it? So, we cannot say that we will be successful, equally su successful if we eliminate certain things such as fossil fuel. So that's it for today. I will take the names of those who have answered my last question correctly in the upcoming segment due to paucity of time. We will try to come out with another question in the next segment, not today. Thank you so much for watching.